nobody hangs with alleged killers without getting their hands dirty themselves mom gave him the nickname tuka but what he did with it was create a street reputation that his mother knows nothing of yo uh, find a way any time of day mind the play build the steps and levitate uh. Gravitate to me. What's up everybody? It's your girl B Octavia and I am back with another video. So today we will be discussing and briefly recapping the latest Say Cheese interview. And that interview was with Tuka's mom. Tuka was a very young teenager, teenager from Chicago who was killed 10 years ago. And he was killed while waiting at a bus stop. Tuka was not a rapper. Tuka never made a song. But his name has been mentioned in many, many songs coming from Chicago rappers. Some mention his name as a term of endearment and love. And other rappers mention Tuka's name in disrespect. I believe the first Chicago artist to mention Tuka was Chief Keef. And if I'm also remembering correctly, Chief Keef is the one who created the lingo Smoking on Tuka. Chief Keef started this Smoking on Tuka thing in Chicago and a lot of different people, they started saying the same thing within Chicago, oh, I'm smoking on Tuka. But it will always be the people who had a problem with him, right? It's, it was never nobody who loved Tuka that was saying, oh, I'm smoking on him, you know? It was started as a term of disrespect and it stayed that way, but people just kept putting different names into it. You know, whoever they had a problem with, that's who they was smoking on. Whoever was they ops, whether they was dead or alive, that's who they was smoking on, especially if they was dead. So, like I said, this started in Chicago, but a lot of different cities and states followed suit with saying smoking on Tuka. A lot of different artists have gotten themselves in trouble from Florida, New York, etc. for saying they smoking on Tuka in their raps and they just thinking that you know, oh, it's from my artist that I look up to, it's catchy, whatever. They didn't really know what it meant. They didn't really know the severity of it. And they talking about a deceased member of the Gangster Disciples. It was people who don't got nothing to do with BD or GD saying smoking on Tuka. Even after they knew exactly what it meant and that's a real person. Chief Keith even went as far as naming a strain of weed, Tuka, so he can literally, not figuratively, smoke on Tuka. He has been mentioned in a time and in a year that he didn't even get to make it to, and that alone, in my opinion, makes 15-year-old Tuka a very strong and maybe feared individual. So let's get into this recap. Tuka's mother hasn't spoke much in the span of this 10 years that she's lost her son. And I commend her for that because you got to take your time. I don't blame her at all. To speak on it, it takes a lot of strength that some parents never get back after losing a child or losing multiple children. Say Cheese talked to Shondell Gregory's mother about the timeline of events leading up to his murder as well as, well as his childhood and very short but eventful life. She spoke on moving to a certain neighborhood where they didn't know nobody and nobody knew them but certain young boys that was around Tuka's age began to f*** with him you know began to think that he was from a place that he didn't come from i believe she said one guy was saying oh you from st lawrence and he's not from st lawrence type 
she spoke about that certain neighborhood and the problems they was having as well as the problems that he was having with the young boys at his school. The challenges that Shondell Tuka Gregory faced is a reflection of a lot of young black boys. Many young males from Chicago have said that they ended up dropping out of school because it would be static on their way to school and static on their way back from school and it's like you fighting for your life every single day you fighting to survive every single day and they rationalize their safety and their lives as more important than their education and it's sad that it's like that especially for them i've known several different young black men to have had to go all the way out maybe virginia to go to school because the high school in southeast i mean will really run them out of school you know and they would come back up to school with a gun and that gets you expelled so they felt like they had to some parents let their kids drop out or get expelled from school and then they don't end up signing them up for another one. Some parents can rationalize because they come from the same place that it's too dangerous for you to go from point A to point B and come back to point A, you know, not in a body bag. But Tuka's mom wanted so bad for her children to have a great education. And with her connections from being a government worker, she was able to get Tuka back in school after being kicked out. I commend her for getting him back in school. She said that he had a situation with the teacher where I don't know if he popped the teacher or he just got into it verbally with the teacher and it was that bad but that's why he got kicked out but he was having problems with boys in that school and i get it you know it's not many schools that provide a great education to kids in chicago private school is very costly i want homeschooling to be a option for People like Tuka, for teenagers like Tuka. And I feel a sense of hope that she had for Tuka, for her son's future and path. But within the same breath, I must say I also sense that sadly his mother doesn't really want to know how active Tuka may have been in the streets. Tuka was hanging with Jakira K.I. Barnes. Her street reputation says that she was an active trigger puller. Whether she had bodies, that is unclear. But what is clear is she always had a gun or two. The thing about it is nobody hangs with alleged killers without getting their hands dirty themselves. One don't go without the other. You can't be a squeaky clean type of teenager hanging around alleged killers. Even if you don't even look like you like that. You have to be like that. Over the years, people have said, and I don't know if it's confirmed or not. I seen pictures of Tuka throwing up some shit though. You know, we got to be honest about what we see. And by hanging with alleged killers, with alleged bodies under their belt, you become an instant target for revenge. In Chicago, revenge is redemption. Revenge is ongoing with them because they can get as many people as they want to for one member. That's how they do on either side. It could be one person that get killed from the GDs, five get killed from the BDs. And then it just returns. And then it just returns. It's a vicious cycle. It makes you a target all in all, but the enemy specifically that your close friends got is your enemies too. Tuka's mom gave him the nickname Tuka, but what he did with it, was create a street reputation that his mother knows nothing of. Of course, we don't know the specifics, but when people like King Von, who's beat murder two times or some crazy shit like that, when he mentions somebody, he's not mentioning them for no reason. 
He has never mentioned an innocent bystander in anything. It's always gang members. It's either enemies or loved ones. Gang members. So where do you think Tuka falls? He falls right in line with all of them. Friend or foe? I can see it two different ways, right? Would you want his mother to see him as a demon? I don't know. The truth really does hurt. The other way that I can see it is this. It's a huge commonality in um, that young black children, they act a certain way out in the streets. They cussing, they fighting, they starting hot wiring cars. and They act that way in the streets versus once they get home, they a totally different person. They caring, they help their little brother with homework. They babysit sometimes, do the dishes, no static, and very, very relaxed. It's like two different people. I've seen this from my younger siblings. I've seen this from kids my age. Once their parents come around, it's like a totally different kid. Tuka's mother was a single parent, working hard day and night, getting to spend a certain amount of time with your children because, you know, while they at school, you at work. They come home from school, you still at work. You come home at night, and that's pretty much the only time that you really get to watch them or not watch them because they sleep, you know? When she wasn't at work, what she said translated to me as... She was defending his honor and his life, her, her grandmother, you know? That was pretty much the only people that Tuka had. He kept being approached, even if the mother was right there, little guys was saying to him, they was trying to drag him out the house or beating on his door, trying to make him come out. There was even one instance where he was almost snatched out the car and probably was finna get beat on or whatever, I'm right in front of his grandmother. So that shows the level of respect that kids in Chicago and places like it, they never had. When a parent asks you, why is all this happening, Tuka? Why do a lot of people wanna fight you? Why do you feel like you gotta have a knife on you, etc.? It'd be easy for a young teenager to lie and say, Ma, I don't know what's going on. I don't know why. I don't, I think it's mistaken identity. I think they jealous of me, Ma. It would be easy for a young teenager to say that versus the truth. I'm a gang member, Ma. This is how this shit is gonna go for a very long time. And it would be hard for a young teenager to tell the truth because it would be the moment you definitely won't be viewed as mama's little baby no more. And that's what a lot of young black kids, that's their worst fear, is being viewed as demonic or a demon or, you know, evil for what you're doing, for what you're doing out there in the streets. For your family to know the truth about you. It's one of the scariest things that a black kid can ever, like, that's the moment of fear. Even if the judge and jury say that you're doing some shit, you will still lie and say, Ma, that wasn't me. Straight face. Cold-blooded serious and you lying to the people that you love and the people that love you. I would never say that Tuka's mom didn't spend enough time. Being a single parent is tough, I know that. It wasn't that she wasn't watching him enough. He was two totally different people at one time, in one shell. He knew exactly what to show his mother and what she shouldn't see from him in his actions, in his words, in his demeanor. As stated, Shondell Tuka Gregory was a alleged member of the Gangster Disciples. It's been rumored for years that, that he died as, as get back from the Black Disciples, was losing a member of theirs. The fallen street soldier from the Black Disciples that I'm speaking on is Odie Perry. Odie Perry was 20 years old in 2011 when he was gunned down. 